Transgender representation in folk tales is very small, so it's always exciting to find a tale that features a non-binary character. The Girl in the Market is an extra special queer folk tale because it features a trans woman of color, which is basically the holy grail of queer folk tales. Pete Geordie Wood, a self-proclaimed fairy tale detective, has been working really hard at uncovering folk tales that offer us glimpses of queer history. Girl in the Market opens his new book, Tales from Beyond the Rainbow, 10 LGBTQ plus fairy tales proudly reclaimed. With the permission of Puffin Books UK, I get to share this tale with you. Even better, I have the artistic help of Mario Hoon the artist who provided the illustrations for The Girl on the Market. Mario is an artist based in Amsterdam, whose work amplifies the richness and inspiration of African culture through illustration and design. Let's head to Benin, in the days when it was the Dahomey Kingdom, for a very special episode of Around the World in 80 Folk Tales. King Dadaze was finding his new leadership role a little overwhelming. He was often distracted from his lessons in diplomacy and politics by the open window of his tower classroom, which looked out on the common folk of the city. One day, he decided to take the day off and mill around the marketplace in disguise. Surrounded by the delicious scent of street meat and the colorful wares of the village vendors, it was just the break Dadaze needed. Rounding the corner, Dadaze saw before him the most beautiful woman he had ever laid eyes on. While this young lady didn't wear the sumptuous trimmings of the women of court, he found that her eyes outshone any jewels those women could boast. The girl in the market was selling her family's peanut sauce. Dadaze got to the front of the line and presented her with a stack of coins large enough to buy out the rest of her stock. The girl thanked Dadaze, flustered and flattered, and she introduced herself as Dowsy. Dowsy beamed at the king as she handed him a bag full of jars. Dadaze was so bewitched by her smile that he spilled his secrets and his feelings. I am the king of this land, but I lay my heart before you as your equal in hopes that you'll do me the honor of coming to the palace to be my wife. Dowsy gasped along with the crowd. She wanted to say yes, but she needed to know that Dadaze would love her completely. She asked to speak with him privately, and she told him her story. How when she was born, her father and mother welcomed a son into the world by another name, but that they were mistaken. The village had accepted Dowsy as the woman she was, but would the king? The Daze only smiled again and repeated his question, will you be my queen? Dowsy accepted, and I wish this was the end of her story, but she was going to be put through it a little bit by one of the women of court. Don't worry though, it's a happy ending. Aluba and her family had long acted as advisors to the royals and she believed Dadaze was going to choose her as his fiancée. So her jealousy soared when Dowsy was announced as the king's betrothed. When Aluba heard rumors of Dowsy's past, she ran to the king, thinking this revelation would cause him to have a change of heart. But Dadaze stood by Dowsy, so Aluba took an even crueler tactic. She befriended Dowsy and began to chip away at her confidence. Soon Aluba began to insinuate that no feminine clothing really suited Dowsy. Next, she began to pick at Dowsy's mannerisms and habits, insinuating that she could never be good enough to be a queen. Then Aluba began to casually deadname Dowsy, and this was the final straw. One night, Dowsy left the palace, unsure of her destination, but knowing she couldn't be where others would not accept her. During her journey, it felt as if the animal kingdom were rebuffing her too. Hippos and monkeys drove her from their lands. Hyenas snarled at her and panthers too. But Dowsy ceased to care what happened to her. The wildcats, perturbed at Dowsy's willingness to be lost, turned away from her. Finally, death approached Dowsy. But when she bowed her head and asked to be taken away, death sat down next to her instead. What troubles you, my dear? He asked. Dowsy's lip trembled. I just want others to see me the way I see myself. Death smiled. What you want is what you have. Let me show you. He put his hands over Dowsy's eyes. And when he took them away, she saw a vision of herself in the marketplace as Dadazi and the supportive village saw her. And she was beautiful. Dowsy returned to the palace, where the distraught king embraced her in relief. Aluba raged, and she was imprisoned for her role in driving Dowsy out of the kingdom. The king and Dowsy were married, and the entire kingdom celebrated their union. That was a very abridged version of Dowsy's story, so I highly recommend you pick up the book so you can read the whole thing. It's one of Pete's favorite tales of the batch.
In addition to the stories, Pete offers extensive background on the sources and how he adapted them for a modern audience. Besides the stories I've already shared, you'll enjoy more stories of boys loving boys. A queer reading of another grim tale, where a triad of ladies delivers a solid blow to the patriarchy. And the book features illustrations by ten artists across the globe and across the rainbow. Order your copy now, and happy pride!